that's how I see things. Criminals are opposed to extradition. So how do I feel when I see two million people protesting extradition? Are they criminals? <clears throat> of course not. I don't think they are. But are they protecting criminals? Well, potentially, potentially they are. Hi, hello and welcome to another episode of China Teacher, where I share with you what it is like to be an English teacher in China. Today is Monday, so I'm in Hong Kong during my day off, so I'm going to be making a few videos out here. Um, I saw fitting since I was coming to Hong Kong to think about what would I like to say about the extradition bill. So if you want to know what my perspective is, don't go anywhere and see you on the other side of the intro. <laughs> Welcome back guys. Um, well, the first thing that I would like to say is that as a Colombian, we had to go through a very violent and uh, horrible period of time in the 1990s when the drug cartels were fighting extradition to the United States. So I want you to understand that whatever I'm going to say here, which is not much, I don't really know that much about this bill and well, the whole situation between China and Hong Kong. But everything that I'm going to be saying here comes from that perspective. And here's the main point. Criminals hate extradition. Not good people. Good people, honest people, decent people, they don't care about extradition. Only criminals care about extradition. All right? So having said that, let's start talking about the different things that I understand with regards to this extradition bill. And we'll let's just have a conversation see where I'm wrong, where I'm right, and well, what is going to be the future of this bill. So I have points against the idea of this bill passing and points for it. Of course, the idea of being behind this bill comes from what I just said. I think that criminals, uh, they don't like extradition, so they will oppose this bill. But the other thing that I have to say about that, to, to go to the other side of this perspective, is that, well, when Hong Kong went back to China, um, it was said that China and Beijing would stay away from uh, a lot of important affairs having to do with Hong Kong for 50 years. That's five decades. And, well, Hong Kong only went back to China about, what? 15 years ago? No, a bit more, about 20 years ago. So, it, yeah, it seems a little bit against what the, the Chinese government had promised. This change, this drastic change to the legislation of Hong Kong seems to go against that promise. So that's the first thing that I would like to say. Now, the other thing that I, that I know is that a lot of Hong Kong people are worried about political uh, persecution, political attacks, uh, for dissidents and people who well, uh, are not uh, aligned with the China government. Well, what I have to say about that is, from my understanding of this legislation, speaking against the government is not a crime in Hong Kong. And this extradition bill, it's only valid for people who have committed crimes in Hong Kong. And not just any crime, they have to be crimes that are punishable with up to seven years, more than seven years in jail. Those crimes, those criminals are the ones who qualify for extradition. So, for example, if you're caught shoplifting, for example, uh, that's going to give you, I don't know, whatever, two years, three years, that would not apply. That would not um, be suitable for extradition. That case would not go through the extradition process. It's only cases that will give in Hong Kong seven years or more of prison. So that limits the scope of uh, the, the amount of cases that would actually go through the extradition process. Another thing that is important to remember is that people seem to be focusing on China, but it is my understanding that this extradition agreement would open extradition with many other countries. China. Uh, is one of them but the general idea is that hong kong doesn't have extradition agreement with too many countries so a lot of people who have committed crimes in other countries 
they come to China, sorry, they come to Hong Kong and they evade the law that way. Hello? Yes, it's okay? It's okay? <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I thought they were telling me not to shoot, but it's, it's, it's okay. Um, where was I? And the final point is what everybody has been talking about, that all this was sparked by a case of a Hong Kong guy who murdered somebody, uh, his girlfriend, I think, of his wife, uh, in Taiwan and now came back to Hong Kong and there is no extradition treaty so there's nothing to do. That is so complicated in terms of it involves Hong Kong which is in a transition to become part of China and Taiwan which is well we all know the issues there so it's, it's not a clear-cut situation and of course it's a very polemic situation. I know that I said that that was the last point but there is another thing that I would like to mention. There's there's something to say about Hong Kong people. It is my experience from, from what I've talked to Hong Kong people, from what I've talked to Chinese people, from what I've seen and i experienced here in the south of China for almost two decades, about how Hong Kong people feel with regards to China and Chinese people. They feel different. They feel like they are Chinese, but they haven't accepted that they will be part of China a hundred percent in in a few decades. It's like it's something that it hasn't registered in their in their brains, in their in their identity. They don't they don't identify themselves as being part of China. Again, I'm not saying that they're not. I'm saying that they don't feel like part of China. For me, it's always been complicated to understand the idea that you can have a Hong Kong passport and you can have a Chinese passport. The idea that you need a permit to come to Hong Kong, the idea that they have a different currency, the idea that, well, so many, so many things that, sorry, so many things that make it look like they are different countries, they are different entities. That's what it looks like when you look at it as, as the things that you experience. But in fact, they are one country, they will be uh, under the same rule of law, under the same management, under the same rules uh, in a few decades. And that is something that Hong Kong people are struggling to, to accept and to adjust to, 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 to accept as a reality. So where does that leave us? It leaves us, unfortunately, um, at the will and the whim of media. A lot of media out there are pushing a certain narrative to to get more aggressive sentiment uh, against China and Beijing. Again, the more they do that, the more I, I stand on my ground when I think only criminals are against extradition. Again, I'm coming from my perspective as a Colombian. We saw the bombs, we saw the terrorism, we saw the heck, I mean, the drug dealers even blew a freaking airplane in Bogota with 200 and something passengers dead instantly because they were fighting extradition. They gone down our, our defense uh, minister or security minister, uh, a very important guy, a minister uh, in the country. So for me, that's how I see things. Criminals are opposed to extradition. So. How do I feel when I see two million people protesting extradition? Are they criminals? <clears throat> of course not. I don't think they are. But are they protecting criminals? Well, potentially, potentially they are. All right, guys, as I said, this is a very difficult topic to talk about because I don't know all the details and uh, I have very strong feelings towards people fighting extradition. So I just wanted to put this video out there and, and leave it open to uh, controversy, comments. You guys let me know what do you think about my position? What do you think about my, about my perspective? What do you think about my experience in terms of extradition, in terms of how Hong Kong people feel about the mainland, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All right, guys, that's all the time for today. I'm coming at you from Hong Kong, right in front of, oh, sorry, over there. That is the Hong Kong courts. So I thought it would be fitting to do this video right here. Okay, guys, 
If you haven't done so, make sure to subscribe to my channel if you like this content. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the bell button to be notified whenever there is a new video out. And remember to like, comment, and share this video to your heart content, okay? And until I see you again, take it easy. Bye for now.